Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. My name is Luis. I'm Alex. And, and we're, we're Teachers on Lockdown. Lockdown. Next is our top five colleague movies. We have two movies in common in our list. The first one is uh, Jane Austen adaptation, Pride and Prejudice. The movie is a 2005 adaptation of a beloved Jane Austen novel. Sparks fly when Elizabeth Bennet, who is being pressured by her family to marry, meets the snobby, upper-class Mr. Darcy. What I really liked about this movie is that it has two smart characters, and smart, very clever characters, and they have to overcome their pride and prejudice in order for them to be to finally become together and it, uh, they just have um the actors yeah kira knightley and matthew mcfaddy mcfaddy <laughs> kira knightley and matthew mcfaddy and have crazy crazy chemistry and they just play off each other really really well and i like the slow yeah build up to the finale where um not really the finale to the part where uh, Mr. Darcy confesses his love for her in the rain and there was such a very sexy moment like Matthew's face and close up and then his his supple supple lips <laughs> and then you have Kira Knightley who's not bad to look at <laughs> which is unlike the book character right? yeah, yeah like Louise said you know that confession scene in the rain where Mark Darcy's oh Mark Darcy sorry that's another movie <laughs> where Mr. Darcy says I love you Most ardent. Mm. I love that part! And one other favorite is the hand holding scene. <laughs> and of course, I love the fact that um, although he's a bit jerky to her, um, he doesn't really push as much. Like, remember that scene as well when he says, if your feelings are still what they were last April, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes have not changed. But one word from you will silence me forever. Darcy for the win! And the other uh, movie that we have in common is Emily. Emily is a waitress living an ordinary life in Paris. Seeing how her neighbor became so happy after she returns a long-lost childhood treasure, she sets out on a mission to make other people happy as well, and romances a guy who collects discarded photo booth pictures. For me, I love it because of my memories associated with this film. So this is the first film that I ever saw, I believe in college, in a, a first foreign film that I saw in college in a theater. And there was a panel after this, and I thought, this is this? what foreign films are like? <laughs> you know, that's what I thought. But anyway, it's a very pretty movie. Like, the aesthetics of it, which is, like, I think, a uh, thing with French films. Um, and I love that she's quirky, he's quirky, like, everybody's quirky. And I love that scene with the creme brulee, her breaking of the creme brulee. My mother would kill me if I did that, but I imagined me, ha you know, being able to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like that they're kind of two introverts and then they just meet and then sparks fly. Also, yeah, the movie is very, very pretty. I like the colors. Like, when I go to a train station, why is this not tinted green? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. And then where is the blind guy who plays the, what, the Victrola? Yeah. <laughs> like, I would look for it in train stations. <laughs> My next movie is The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride is the movie adaptation of William Goldman's novel. It is a fairy tale adventure about Princess Buttercup and her one true love. So I don't really love The Princess Bride. I'm not obsessed, but I'm I'm not. I love the movie as well because it was it's was such a I think faithful adaptation of the book, and my favorite character is Inigo Montoya. I know it's it looks weird that I do that, but. You know, I love the movie because um, I, I love that she has such a silly name, Buttercup. <laughs> Why? And also the whole... Inconceivable! You keep using the horse. I don't think it means what you think it means. I love it. My next movie is Your Name. Two Japanese teenagers, one living in a lakeside town and the other in bustling Tokyo, find out they are swapping bodies. Mitsuha discovers things are more complicated than mere body swapping after she decided to go to Tokyo to meet Taki. 
yeah, basically the movie is about two teens who body switch and then dealing with their lives that's not entirely theirs. And then what happens is, uh, like, it turns into a disaster movie that kind of includes some time travel element and some small god magic. Okay, that description sounds like a mess, but the movie definitely weaves through all these elements and then comes out as a great film that leaves you feeling nostalgic and hopeful. <laughs> My next movie is Crazy Stupid Love. Crazy Stupid Love is the story of a middle-aged man who is heartbroken when his wife asks for a divorce. To get over this, he goes to a bar where he meets a young man who teaches him how to pick up women. My favorite part in the movie is, you know, when Emma Stone's character meets Ryan Gosling's character and then they go to his house and she's drunk and then she makes him take off his shirt and he's like, oh, are you Photoshop? And then she asks, what's your move? Like, what's your big move? I got lots of moves. What's your big move? I love that he has a move. I mean, why would a guy who looks like Ryan Gosling need a move? And the move being... I work dirty dancing into the conversation. Dirty dancing? Can I sit down, please? Yeah. Can I put back on my shirt? No. Why dirty dancing? What do we do? Do we watch it? You know the big move at the end of dirty dancing where Patrick Swayze picks up Jennifer Grey? Yeah. I can do that. Okay. So I tell girls I can do the move. I put on the song, Time of Your Life. I do the big move. And they always want to have sex with me. Oh my god. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I agree. But it works every time. That would not work on me. No. Oh god, this is ridiculous. I don't want to do it. Come this is beyond ridiculous. Run and jump. No. Yeah. No, thank you. Come on. Thank god I'm drunk. Here we go. Ah! I mean, how ridiculous is that? It's so ridiculous that I want it to happen to me in real life. Like, I want the guy to be able to have a move. It doesn't have to be dirty dancing. But if it were dirty dancing, he'd get more points. And the next movie that I like is Call Me By Your Name. Set in the Italian countryside in the 1980s, love blossoms between 17-year-old Elio and mid-20s graduate student Oliver. So me, being a Purita Provinciana with working class parents, I can so relate to this. <laughs> and also, the movie's very pretty. Um, I think what I liked about it is because it's set in the country, and since I've been, uh, as an adult, I moved to the city, so for me, those scenes where they're just biking around, and then the kind of soft lighting that you have when you try to remember your childhood, it's there in this movie. So I love that, just the feel, the provincia feel of it, coupled with the whole young love, sweet love experience. And here's the thing, when you're kind of in your late 30s, and you're still single, and starting to lose hope, no longer believing in life after love. Yeah, it kind of rekindled that for me. Just the killing feeling. Yeah. My last movie is Stardust. Stardust is the movie adaptation of Neil Gaiman's novel. It's the story of Tristan who promises Victoria to get a star from a magical kingdom beyond the wall. In trying to keep his promise, he ends up having the adventure of a lifetime. So I love it because, of course, it's a Neil Gaiman story. Um, I read the book first and I was very nervous about how it would translate, you know, to the movie screen because usually those fail. But you know what? This was actually pretty good. And my favorite thing about it was Elaine's speech. My heart, it feels like, it's like my chest can barely contain it. Like it, it doesn't belong to me any, anymore. It belongs to you. And if you wanted it, I'd wish for nothing in exchange. No gifts, no goods, no demonstrations of devotion. Nothing but knowing you love me too. Just your heart. In exchange for mine.
And the last movie on my list is Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. High school senior Nora asks Nick to be her pretend boyfriend to avoid being teased by frenemy Triss. Nick turns out to be Triss's ex-boyfriend, whose mixed CDs Nora liked. Shenanigans ensue as the kids go around New York in search of where's Fluffy and Nora's drunk friend, Caroline. Oh, whenever I watch this, I feel as if I myself went on a night out. Um, if this happened in real life, I think it would be one of those nights where you, your partner, and your friends would always look back on fondly. Like, um, it, it would be a roller coaster of a night, and some parts weren't that great. But dang it, it's freaking memorable and life-changing. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, some parts here are kind of crazy. You mentioned yeah. the chewing gum oh, part. <laughs> yeah. So I love this uh, movie, too, so, but Luis got it first. But <laughs> I have the DVD, and I have the book of it. So I love that they also have the, the CD mix. Like They still yeah, think they yeah. did that at that time. It's, it's dating it, but I love it because of, again, the same thing, the same reason that Louise loves it because of the you know, the whole night out scene. But I'm just super disturbed by the bubblegum scene. <laughs> like, you don't know where that's been! We know, we've seen it. <laughs> exactly. Like, ooh, that was on a toilet with puke. <laughs> Public toilet. Public toilet. In New York. <laughs> But then again, great movie. <laughs> I yeah. loved it. Great movie. So that's it for us. Thank you for watching. And we will see you in the next episode where we continue our um, review of um, Together the series. See you guys. Enjoy your Valentine's. Don't be miserable. <laughs>